We will be starting our Bridges to Life presentation in about five minutes. If you're connected via internet or via phone, please hold on. We'll be, we'll be starting the live presentation in two minutes. Thank you. Hello, my name is John Veen. I'm the Director of Special Education 
here at the Colorado School for the Deaf and the Blind. And um, tonight we're going to be talking about the Bridges to Life or BTL program. And in particular, we have asked um, our parents of our seniors uh, to, to attend this information uh, night about because um, as seniors and as parents of seniors, um, we need to know within the next month if um, you all will be participating in the Bridges to Life program. So um, tonight is your opportunity to learn more about that program, what it has to offer, and if it might be right for your son or daughter um, to participate in for next school year. So what is BTL? And we, we call it BTL for Bridges to Life. Um, Bridges to Life is our um, 18 to 21 year old program for students who are um, not yet um, ready to transition into their next environment. And their next environment could be anything from a four-year college, a two-year college, a technical school, um, a competitive job, or even um, a job that may require um, um, a supported job environment. Um, so really, it's very individualized depending on the student and where they're wanting to go for their next environment. Um, Bridges to Life looks very different than our um, high school program because it's not designed in periods like um, you've experienced with freshman through senior year where there's seven or eight periods and then you're, you're assigned to a certain class and you get certain credits. Our Bridges to Life uh, program uh, works more with workshops um, and job experience and or vocational um, placements. So it's it very much individualized for the students and what their needs are, um, but it, it's, it's not structured in the same way that a uh, regular high school would be. Um, we do have different options within the Bridges to Life program. Um, we do have um, a program here on campus um, that meets, that students are scheduled into something, whether it be a, a work site or um, workshops, or a vocational training experience um, from 8.45 to 3.30 every day, Monday through Friday. Um, so that is kind of our on-campus program. But we also have what's called community program, which means that you live in your home community. That could be Colorado Springs, but it could be Denver, it could be Grand Junction, it could be Pueblo, it could be wherever your home community is. In that option, um, students are served by a teacher that actually drives to that location or connects with that student either remotely through um, a VP or through other distance measures um, and provides job coaching, um, vo uh, transition services um, to that student. So um, the hours of contact are much different if you're a community student, obviously, because um, they'll be receiving services either once a week or sometimes once every other week uh, from that community uh, teacher who actually is driving to them or connecting to them remotely. So a majority of our students who, who move um, from seniors to bridges tend to be on-campus students, but they could also be community students, meaning they are experiencing, um, we have a student, for example, in, um, in a community college up in Denver, um, who is part of our community. Uh, he's still a student here, but also um, in, a, in, a, in a community college in his home community. So there's lots of different options within the Bridges to Life. It's not something that is um, just one program.
It's really designed for each of the needs of the students that enroll. Are there any questions with the, the residential versus the community programming for our students? Um, a majority of our Bridges to Life students have um, a job experience as part of their Bridges to Life program. Um, this job experience is something that generally is paid, they're paid through CSDB. There are some of our students who, after being paid by CSDB, actually get hired uh, by the employee, by their job site, and we call that competitively employed. Um, but most all of them are uh, paid, um, either through CSDB or through their um, their job site. Um, but because of the amount that they will they will be paid, which is minimum wage, um, it does not affect their SSI benefits. Um, this is very similar to um, the OJT program. Most of, of the students um, currently here at CSDB as part of their senior year are participating in OJT. So very similar requirements with SSI. You just need to inform them about um, the amount of money that they will be earning. Um, but um, through the Bridges uh, program, the <clears throat> excuse me, the maximum that they could um, earn is about six hundred and twenty um, dollars a month, um, which is less than um, the impact uh, to to SSI. Um, part of our Bridges to Life program, similar to our OJT program is that the students have access to the money that they earn um, and that we set up banking accounts for them so that we can help them as they manage their money. Um, there is budgeting activities that are part of our Bridges to Life program and that actually works both um, within our independent living program as well as budgeting for future um, goals such as college or car or whatever, um, but um, we do have um, a program that allows our Bridges to Life students to experience independent living through our apartments on campus and then our apartments off campus. But again, those are something that the students would need to pay for, um, and and because they have paid work, um, that's that becomes part of their budgeting process. Um, we do have um, one of our uh, Bridges to Life um, teachers here, so um, if there's any any time that you feel like I'm... Thank you, Heather. Um, we do require, because um, all, most all of our students in the Bridges to Life program have paid employment, um, we do require a number of paperwork, um, just like any job placement would require. Um, if your student is currently on the, uh, on the job training program, this is very similar to what they have filled out this year uh, as part of that program. Um, but um, th that paperwork includes the work application, our contract, so that students understand the, um, the expectations of work, um, off-campus off permission forms from our parents, um, especially with Bridges to Life because um, m more and more of our Bridges to Life students are getting off-campus jobs where the transportation is being become part of their independence. So they are more and more, we're trying to get them to um, be uh, independent within their transportation routes. Employer agreement forms, um, we have workman comp, um, so security, um, state ID, usually driver's license or state ID, uh, W4 and W and I9. Um, so again, all of these are required because they actually are a state employee, uh, because we pay them um, minimum wage for their job placement. Um, 
we do have um, students who are day students in our Bridges to Life program. Um, and those are uh, students within a 30 mile radius of the school are considered day students. But if a student um, in the Bridges to Life has some type of independent living goal where they would need um, some more assistance or experience living independently on their own, um, they can apply for and become a dorm student with us here at CSDB. As part of our residential program, we do have independent checklists that the students go through in order to qualify for our on-campus um, apartments and then hopefully if they're successful there, to our off-campus apartments. Uh, again, those are monitored by our staff um, and it helps in in the daily living and independent living skills of our students. Um, but not um, all of our day students um, qualify to be residential, um, so that's on an individual basis. If the student, um, if, if the home of the student is outside a 30 mile radius, then obviously they do qualify to be on campus during the school week. Any questions with the, um, with the living part of BTL? Um, now, the Bridges to Life program or the 18 to 21 year old program are for, are de is designed for students who have met graduation requirements but have not yet been issued their diploma. So this is one reason why we're gathering you all here because within the next month or so, we need for you and your parents to decide if during graduation we'll be issuing your diploma or if we'll be withholding your diploma in order for you to continue on the Bridges to Life program. So that's why we're having this meeting tonight because that decision needs to be a decision between the student and the parent whether this program is appropriate for you in order for us um, to move forward with enrolling you into the Bridges to Life program and in particular withholding the issuing of your diploma. Now if um, that does not mean you, wait, that was going to be a triple negative, so let me rephrase that. Um, if you are entering the Bridges to Life program and we're withholding your, your diploma, you still participate in the graduation ceremony. Um, and you would be walking across the stage and doing your tassel and doing all that. It's just that the um, booklet that we give you would, would not have the diploma in it. We would not issue it. We actually print it, we just don't print the date. We wait until you're finished with the Bridges to Life program before we, we print the date on your diploma. So any time after that graduation ceremony, if you decide either you have completed a transition and you're successfully employed where you want to or you have enrolled into a technical college or a four-year college and you feel like you're done, we can issue you a diploma at any time after that. Um, so we just need um, that verified from you and your parents that you want your, di your, your diploma issued, and we can do that. So I think that's the most confusing part of it is um, that, that the students um, don't understand about the diploma part. But if, um, so you, if you've gone through our graduation ceremony, that means you've met all the requirements. We've just not issued you the diploma and that we can at any time issue that diploma. But you are coming back to receive more services from CSDB, so we can't issue that diploma until that time that you finish those transition services. Um, there's a number of ways where we um, feel students have met their transition goals. Um, generally, if they're employed, um, for three months um, without any outside support from us, um, we'll want to exit them and um, from transition services. Um, or if they've enrolled into a uh, four-year college, for example, and that's their goal, um, we might exit them. Um, also, anyone who turns 21 has to be exited uh, from transition. 
the semester they turn 21. So if you have a November birthday, then in December, um, you would be exiting um, after you've turned 21. If you have a February birthday, it would be in May that you exit. So it's the, sem it's the semester you turn 21. So um, part of this, um, that we're having this meeting tonight is because we do need to know by May 17th if um, what students will be participating in the Bridges to Life program for next year so that we do not issue the diploma at graduation. Um, because the, the minute we issue um, the diploma, that means the K-12 or our CSDB services ends and the student has to move to adult services, such as voc rehab or other adult services. So um, those, those are the two, that's kind of <clears throat> the decision we need to know is whether to issue the diploma or if the student will continue with Bridges to Life. Now there is actually a third option and that is um, all of the students here have home school districts, whether locally if that's district 11 or if they're from denver dps or littleton they can also receive transition services from their home school district again csdb because they would be meeting our graduation requirements we would hold the diploma and they would get transition services from their home school district and when they were done with those transition services we would issue their diploma likewise we have a number of students who graduate, and I'm using that in italics, graduate from outside school districts, District 11, DPS, those districts hold the diploma and they enroll into our Bridges to Life program. They might not have come to CSDB through high school, but they are receiving transition services from us, the 18 to 21 year old. So those school districts hold the diploma, they enroll here, we provide service, and when they're done, they they um, request their diploma from their home school district. So it can it could be similar for CSDB students. Now questions. Yes, I'm, and I will repeat the question because we we have some some people that are on the phone and on the internet, so it needs to come through here, but. Um, let me, um, the, the question, I'll repeat the question, and then I'll start it, but then I'm going to turn it over to Heather. Um, the question was about transportation, um, and are you, are you particularly talking about transportation to and from CSDB or transportation daily for the student to go to their job and or vocational classes? So it's transportation that happens during the day, during the academic day. Um, our goal is for our students to become as independent as possible. Um, and so there are times that we do provide transportation for students. Um, but then we, we support them in becoming independent in their transportation. For example, the first month or so, they, we might be providing transportation to the area vocational program for our, our students, but then slowly transition them into the bus system and provide them a bu the bus um, tokens for them to become independent in doing that themselves. Is that, can you, Heather, can you come here? Like what John was stating, we do have workshops. And at the beginning of the school year, students take specific workshops that focus on transportation only. And they learn how to read the different bus routes that are in the, the city. And we practice. We go from point A to B to make sure that they know how to get to and from CSDB into work or from work to another place. And we provide them for a one time only a bus pass. And the pass has. I think 22, 
uses on it. And then when they've used that up, they are in a job and they're earning money and they budget for that. And that was another thing that John had touched on. So the students will be learning how to budget their money to use toward bus passes and other things that they're going to need to help them become more independent. So they will learn routes. And if their jobs change because some students do a different job second semester, then we go through the bus route again and we do training throughout the year to make sure that they know how to get from point A to B. So does that answer your question? Okay. Other questions? Again, oh. well, say it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, and I know we have some students that need to get to a game. Um, Again, the Bridges to Life program is, is individually designed for the student in their future. Um, so we have, for example, some students that are enrolled in uh, Paul Mitchell uh, because um, uh, they want to be a beautician. Um, and we have a few of those students, and they're actually doing really, really well. Um, we have other students that, um, you know, we, they explore different vocational um, experiences. Um, anywhere from dog grooming to auto mechanics. Um, we have a number of our students who participate in what's called the Area Vocational Program or AVP program as part of Pikes Peak Community College. They have 22 certificate programs such as early childhood or child care, um, clean room, um, culinary. Um, if, if one of our students is interested in that, we can hook them up into the AVP program, which is um, either an all morning or an all afternoon vocational experience. Um, at the end of either one year or two years, they earn a certificate in that job field um, and they would be qualified to um, have a competitive job in that field. So um, again, we, work, we look at the student individually and really design a program for them. So it's not just one program, it's many programs. Yes. Um, we, uh, uh, again, that, um, let me repeat the question. The question was about a specific job placement that a student is currently doing um, and if that can continue for next year. Um, we, we often will look at um, viable careers for students and what would be the best experience for them. Um, if that being an assistant in a classroom is really gonna fit with his job experience, then we could um, continue a similar. Generally, we don't like to keep the very same dynamics because you want to as, get as much variety of experience as possible. So maybe we'll try him um, out in an elementary class or in a daycare setting, depending on what his career goals were. Um, okay, Heather? The first two weeks of school, we do a lot of assessments. And one of the assessments we do is a career scope. And that looks at the strengths that the student has. And we try and pull from all of those strengths to place them in a job that will fit what their need is and what their strength is. Because our main goal is to make sure that we're exposing them to a career or a job work study where they're leaving us once they age out and they can work successfully based on something that they're really strong at doing. So we do look at the career scope results and we try and plan pathways for them based on that. Sure. Yeah, thank you. One, one of the um, measures that we have as part of our um, school-wide plan is um, that our students, one year after leaving CSDB, 
will be successful in their post-school goals. Many of you, and uh, many of you might know, but as part of the IEP process, we set up what post-school education and work goal for each of your students. And so that's in their IEP. So one year after leaving CSDB, we are tracking our graduates who leave, and usually they're leaving from Bridges to Life because we offer such a good, um, this, this program is actually recognized nation, nationwide. So um, that's another kind of feather in our cap um, and, and great opportunity for you and your children to participate in. But our uh, success rate is, uh, is hovering around the 80% rate. For our, for our students, one year after meeting their goals within their IEP for their post-secondary placements, whether that be in a four-year college or in a competitive job or, or living independently. So um, we have some very good success rates. Um, and it's because it's so individualized and we're giving those concrete experiences to our students in order for them to be successful. Any other questions? Okay. Well, if there's no other questions, I just want to re reiterate again um, that we would need to hear from you um, either through um, your child's student advocate or Tara Lynn Gray or JJ Ryan, who is a career counselor here at CSDB, um, whether um, your, your son or daughter is planning to move to the Bridges to Life program, program so that we not issue the diploma during the graduation ceremony. Um, and again, that, that date is, is May 17th. Oh, we do have a question. Um, graduation is on um, June 6th, I believe, and it's in the, in the gym. Yeah. Nope. There's no tickets. It's open to the public, so you don't um, need a ticket. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we're open to as many as can attend. Do you have a question? Um, the Bridges to Life program can, for most of our students, starts after they've earned the credits they need to graduate. So for most of our students, that means in August, they'll trans transfer. <coughs> Excuse me. There are a number of students who can't participate in graduation this June, but can graduate in December they may be moving to Bridges in January. Um, but then, so it depends on, on the credit situation of your son or daughter. But a majority of our students would be, um, if they've met that graduation requirement in June, then start in August in Bridges. Yeah, right. Um, and our students, um, if they're employed by CSDB, um, in their job site, um, we can't pay them over the summer. They can't work in their job site over the summer. They can't work over the holidays. They have to only be able to work during school days, which is part of our, our limitations. Um, that's why our goal is actually for our students to get uh, competitive work. Then it's not limited to the school schedule. Anything else to add, Heather? If there's no other questions, I want to thank you all for coming. Um, and again, just reiterate um, that we will need to hear from you sometime before May 17th. Have a, a fabulous evening. Good night.